Hey everyone, Paul ISM, welcome to part two of our Chevy Impala, blah, 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 blah. Hi everyone, Paul Sam. welcome to part 2 of our Revel 125th Revel Chevy Impala build. So, before we get going today, please have a listen to this. Is there anything in this video that you see that you think, oh, where did he get that from? It's probably on the list that's mentioned in this sort of segue. So, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel and of course if you scroll up in the description there's a link to a big long list of all the items i use in my videos so if you see anything you should be able to find it in there so back with part two um it's been a while because we're working on other projects but we're back today today we plan to get the um chassis pri prepped primed painted along with all the running gear suspension the wheels i will have a bit of a test fit on the body at the end now to me, this is one of the not least interesting videos because there's not really a lot going on that's like, wow, look at that. It's just painting stuff, gluing things together. Um, but it leads us on to part three, which will hopefully build the conclusion of the build. And I hope, fingers crossed, this thing's going to look great. It's looking good as it is. So fingers crossed, it'll end up with a lovely looking build. So without any more waffle, let's jump straight in and see where we're at. Okay, let's jump to the instruction book and have a good look at what needs doing today. So we've got all the engine to assembly. As you can see, several multiple components there. Um, we've got to figure out what needs assembling before painting. Suspension, subframes, engine mounting into the chassis, uh, the exhausts, the rear suspension, rear diff, prop shaft, uh, so on and so forth. Not a huge amount to do, just a couple of pages worth there. There is a little bit more through the pages at the back which i've kind of skipped through and sorted with this little lot as well to save time later on so we're going to cut off all the parts so these are the engine halves and we're going to work our way through them all we're going to clean them up in the usual manner and then mount them all ready for primer so we have various colors that get need doing here um, the engine we're going to do in an orange we've got some metallic components to paint and there's always some semi-gloss black to do as well so some nice careful trimming and sanding will make sure that we get some good fitting parts. Like I said, it's not the youngest of kits. It's a 24-year-old Revel. It's not the oldest by far. Um, and it actually fits together on the whole not too bad at all. So we're just removing all the excess plastic here. Checking the fit on our engine halves, which is pretty decent to be honest. Not too bad at all. Everything seems to line up well. We've got our Tamiya Plasti World Mix. Uh, a time extra thin EMA plastic weld and we're just gonna quickly go around it all and glue it all together again watch for your fingers watch your fingerprints last thing you want to do is get a nice glue splodge on the engine because it makes it a bit more difficult uh, and more time consuming on parts like this to remove them uh, because you need to sand it away so time spent here as always preparation and patience is key to model building and the time you take shows dividends in the end. So there we go. There's all the parts cut off. They have been basically cleaned up using the sprue cutters. As you can see, there's quite a lot of them. We've got a 400 uh, customizable cut to shape, one of our buffers, a 220 thinning sponge. And we're going to use this on the whole to clean up all these parts. So we've got our prop shaft, which here has some pretty nasty seams through it. So we're going to grab the bigger 220 sponge and gently go to town on this. They are quite prominent, so it does take a bit of work. And I'm not going to lie, we are applying a little bit of pressure because the moulding halves are quite far off. Although we're applying a little bit of pressure to this, I'm not applying a massive amount. Like I say, just take your time and make sure you're holding the support as you sand through it. Um, it is it is a really prominent seam on this and some of the parts vary from flash to an actual seam 
it's an older Revel kit, and I think when you build these kits, you need to think, you know, it's not Tamiya kit or a newer kit. It is going to have flaws. It is going to need sanding. Uh, even on the likes of a Tamiya kit, this would still need a sand because there's still a seam line on it. It's just not as prominent, and it is better molded. But on the whole, this kit isn't too bad. I didn't really complain about much, which makes a change. Um, but just take your time. And you get it all cleaned up pretty quickly. There's, there's a lot of parts to do here. And it did take me quite some time to do. But on the whole, not too bad at all. So you've got various parts. So you need various different sanders. We've got the thinny sponge, which fits in these little gaps. Absolutely perfect. We've got the 400 customizable for any flat areas. We've got the 400 thinny for any areas that we can't quite get a flat edge on. Or we don't want a totally flat edge. But as you can see, just taking our time there sand all the little seams and excess screw off so the customizables are fantastic there's a review on the channel you can cut them to any shape or um, angle or shape size that you want and they are very very handy and adaptable tools as you can see we get right in on the auxiliary belt or belt to get rid of all that excess plastic there's a little bit of flash on this and then cut to size and get it right into the corners and get rid of all that excess plastic very very handy sanders and this has become literally my go-to sander uh, i intend to be using this for pretty much everything now that has a flat edge obviously very very useful and versatile tools so there we go i think that's pretty much everything cleaned up just have one final check of all the parts and once we're happy, we can start mounting them for primer. So, as you can see with the engine, we've used a prop shaft mount at the back to pop a cocktail stick in. What we're doing is we start with all the parts, looking for where we're going to mount them. Can we get a clip on them? Do they need to be glued? Can we get some white tack in there? And on this one, no, we're going to drill out the very, very centre gently with my battery-powered drill. Now, somebody always asks about this. It's a little battery-powered drill from Micromark that you sadly can't get anymore. I'm sure you could find a variant around there, uh, similar. But it's got a 0.5 um, drill bit in it. And it's perfect for this job. Just applying small holes where needed. And away we go. So, we've got our subframe for the front. Which has several components. That's the spring. Upper and lower. Make sure you read your instruction book because there are two variants for this kit. Make sure you get the right one because one's for higher or lower suspension. Assemble all your parts as the instructions state and then carefully glue it all together. I've just lost a part. We're having a look for it. Where's it gone? It's there. Keep looking. You'll find it. Nope. It's not under the instructions. It's not, it's not behind the glue. Ah, there it is. It's hiding at the back. And there we go. As you see, we've got some new stickers on the work mat including a brand new Paul ISM sticker I've had printed up if anyone wants one drop me a message uh, I am selling them I have to sell them because they cost me a fortune they were personally printed by uh, I pay for the printing myself it's not through UMP so if you want one hit me up and I'll sell you out a post uh, price and price for the sticker as well very nice high quality stickers of my logo if you want one for your bench let me know so we go some careful manipulation of that part we get it on there's about five or six parts to this subframe for the front. But once it's all on, and carefully glued in place. Brace, place. Give it a hole for a minute. And there we go. Pretty easy. Some careful glue management. Make sure everything's in place, everything's straight, everything's equal because you don't want it to be lopsided. We want to make sure it's equidistant everywhere. And properly glued in place put to one side to dry and all's good right the engine we glued the two halves together they've been left to dry and look at the instructions all these components are about to put on bar a little bit of hand painting here and there are all the same orange color now someone out there is going to tell me i'm painting this in the wrong orange color i couldn't care less if i'm honest i was going to paint it red to annoy people but i thought no we'll go with orange it's a nice color and uh, that's what we're going to use in a bit. But yeah, several components to put on. We've got the sumps gone on. We've got the rocker covers. 
going on next. These need some careful placement to make sure you get them the right way because looking at them, there's not the most prominent locator points. So use a bit of judgment, use your instructions, a bit of common sense, it should be all good. And again, that's how it all glued together. We've drilled some holes in the top of the suspension part here. The rest of it we're going to mount up with a mixture of CA glue, white tack, and any way or shape or form that we can to get it ready for primer. So again, this part took probably two and a half hours to do alone. Just to cut everything off, clean it up, mount it all for primer. It took quite a while to do. It can be a little bit boring. Jobs like this I tend to save for the live shows because it just whiles the night away. While we're chatting and having a laugh and a joke, it's you know it's a nice way to do boring things like this. It turns monotony into, I guess, a little bit of fun. We just look at every component and think, what's the best way of doing this? Does it need a clip? Does it need a little bit of CA glue? Can I get to kind of wedge a cocktail stick in like that? Perfect. And I tend to go through all the easier ones first, leaving the more difficult ones for the end to see how we're going to do it. So I love this little drill. If you can get a little hole in somewhere where it can't be seen, it's absolutely perfect. The drill is so low powered, you can stop it with your fingers. Um, it's just got enough power to get into the plastic. Um, I'm sure there's others out there if you have a look around, but it's got the perfect size chuck. I think it's a 2.4 mil chuck for the shank bits. And it just works absolutely perfect. So we've got the prop shaft here. I'm picking a point on the underneath where it won't be seen. So this bit will be hard against the chassis of the car to put a small hole in the top. So we just go halfway through. Got a cocktail stick. Find the hole. Pop it in. Job done. And there we go. So there's all the parts mounted up. We've got some UMP Ultimate Black Primer. Shake the living Jesus out of it. We've got our Ultimate Apex Airbrush, 0.35 needle, 25 psi. We've shook the living lights out of the payer primer bowl. Very, very important step. And we're going to apply two or three light coats to all the parts. Now they are white, so it's going to take a little bit more coverage. But as you can see, no real drama for our primer at all. The key to our primer is uh, preparation. Make sure all your parts are grease and fingerprint free. Do apologize about the autofocus on the camera. This is one thing I really need to do and I keep forgetting to do it. This camera needs moving. It needs to go up. I would like a wider angle shot of my spray booth. So it is a plan for this week that we're going to lift this up a bit. Because I think over time the mount has kind of sagged a bit and come down. So it brings in a bit close and then the camera has a bit of an awkward job auto-focusing. Because it picks up the airbrush and focuses on that instead. So yes, that is a plan. And hopefully we get a wider angle shot because my spray booth is about three foot wide. Two foot deep. And it's quite big. And we're focused on a foot square here. Which is brilliant for nice close shots like this. But overall I think we need a wider angle shot. So yeah, we're going to go over it. I know how far I can push this. If you're not sure, literally just put a very, very thin mist coat on. By the time you've done all the parts and come back, it'll be dry, ready for its next coat. But I know how far I can push this. And basically, you know you've pushed it too far because it will run and tends to separate on the plastic. Once you get that mist coat down, you've got a key for the primer and you can start laying on a little bit heavier. It's fantastic stuff self levels it's very very forgiven as long as you follow a few simple keys and that is clean airbrush well shook primer nice thin coats and just take your time so these are dried overnight we've got some tamiya lp5 semi-gloss black pre-mixed in that bottle you can see to the right and we're going to apply a couple of light coats as you can see it looks rather heavy it covers a really fast over black primer and obviously because we've got multiple angles we do need to go a little bit heavier than we on smaller parts. But as you can see, all the parts painted up are on the right. And it literally, you probably could get away with one coat, but I tend to do two, just to ensure even coverage. The black primer puts a fantastic base down for it. And we're just covering all the angles and making sure we get a bit of a, not full gloss, 
um, spray on it. It's more of a semi-gloss and it dries to that beautiful semi-gloss LP5 look that a lot of the cars call for. So what we're doing, some of these parts I'll need hand painting later on. We're just spraying the parts that are mostly black and then we'll detail paint the smaller parts later on. So again, onto the metallic components, we've got AK Interactive Steel. This is their enamel-based product. Again, shake the bejesus out of the bowl. We've got our UMP Apex, 0.2 mil needle, 18 PSI. This paint isn't too fussy on needle or PSI, but I just tend to use it like this. Uh, it's one of my favorite paints. Very, very forgiving. Being an enamel, you can really pile it on. It does take a little bit longer to dry, um, but it's very, very forgiving. And once you put a couple of coats on, it gives a very nice, deep metallic finish. As you can see there, it covers really, really well. I promise I will sort this camera angle out for the next video. And almost in one coat, we're covered. Great stuff. I hose this stuff on. It's unbelievably forgiving. It smells a bit. It takes a while to dry. If, you, if you're still handling it a couple of days later, it can cause a few issues. So just take your time. If it is enamel, enamel will inherently take longer to dry. Engine, we've got some Tamiya LP51. Thinned about 60-40, thinner to paint with a lack of thinner of retarder. And we're just going to put a couple of coats on. We've got some AK Interactive Aluminium now on these parts. So that is our brake master cylinder, I believe. Looks like it is. And we're just going to give these a couple of light coats. Smaller part, go lighter on the coats because it's so easy to flood. When you've got larger parts, you're spreading the paint around. You're starting the airbrush on and off a little bit. It's a little bit easier on yourself. So we've got several components to paint up. And whilst the first coat of the engine is drying, we're doing this, and then we'll go back. And the beauty of having multiple airbrushes, because you can keep painting one while you switch airbrush and come back and vice versa. So we've got a couple of nice coats of that, and that is that done. Suspension components, rear struts, shockers. We decided to go with red. This is the exact same colour um as we did the nsx in now is it nsx no the ferrari we're building at the minute that's what it is it's the paint i decanted it was there in the booth i thought you know what let's use that so all this is dried overnight again we're here the next day we've got some say glue we've got all our engine components we're going to assemble these together so again instructions are a little bit vague in places so Good reference pictures of the real engine, which there's loads of on Google, can help you. I think this is the starter motor. Just looking at instructions which way it orientates around. A little dab of CA glue. There we go, that's in place. We've got this little component. I'm not going to lie, I don't know what it is at all. It's a silvery, sticky outy bit. I'm sure, somebody out there screaming at me now, going into the follow up with Google. I have no idea. I don't know much about um, American engines. I think I was going to guess. I said it was a thermostat housing. I don't know. So we'll keep that secret and pretend we know what it is. It's a valve. So there we go. Again, make sure you don't get any seagull on your fingers, get them to the parts. Not only would it stick to you, but it'll ruin all your hard work you've had on your paintwork. So this was given two or three coats of the gloss. LP51, beautiful orange colour, nice and deep colour. And uh, yeah, allowed to drive a night, it looks really good. Again, with anything white, orange, red, yellow, thin coats are needed because it's easy to flood. Detail painting up the pulleys on the auxiliary belts. Uh, we've got a starter motor on there as well. No, it's not a starter motor, it's an alternator, my bad. So we're just detail painting with some Vloer Model Air metallic silver. Brush painting it on because it's the easiest way to do it. Just a careful application. Just quickly as well, something a lot of people mention and I get taken the mickey out of. Yes, I own quite a lot of watches. I do. I love Citizen watches. I have several 
dozen of them and I tend to wear a different one every day. Now these videos can be filmed over a week so you will see several in a video. I'm not mental and changing watches every hour. This is literally a different day and I always pick a different watch to wear so I get equal rotation of them. Um, I absolutely love them. Um, probably my next favourite kind of hobby next to modelling. They're very enjoyable. I get It sounds really sad but I get a lot of enjoyment out of them and uh, it eats to their own. So yeah, don't think I'm absolutely mental. I've not got like a stack of watches off camera and just pick one as I go. Um, it's literally a different day and I just switch watches. So there we go, it's all painted up. We've got our fan at the front. Dabby CA glue in there. Let it dry for a second. There we go. Now we can attach this on there as well. So the engines aren't too bad. They're basically complacent. So you could improve it. I think the best thing to add to these is the HT leads. Um, wire them up. It does add a bit of detail. And I promise you on the next one we do, I will go and buy some. I've got to buy them from the States. There's nowhere in the UK that sells them. So I'm going to have to pay the postage for them, which isn't a problem. They're only small parts. Um, but I think I'll buy a good half a dozen of them for future projects. And we will definitely wire up the next engine because it does make a bit of difference. Although I will admit, the last one I showed on camera, somebody had to go at me because I wired it in the wrong firing sequence. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah needs to do their own, I suppose. Manifolds are on. Got the carburetor on the top in that manifold. And so on. Now you need to really look carefully at where these manifolds go because it's not apparent by the instructions. I had to look online at references to see, ah, there's the locator points there. Because I couldn't quite see where it went. So a couple of careful dabs of the uh, perfect pen from Loctite. Nice thick CA glue. And there we go, grabs instantly. But you can still move things around should you need. This is what I like about the CA glue. It's a nice thick gel. And again, we'll pop it down, let it dry, and come back. And we've got our air cleaner to go on. I've got a painting this silver, chrome here. Uh, I decided to go with black, which is what the call out call for. I'm looking online, a lot of them are black. And there we go. That is our basic engine complete. So again, we'll leave that to dry, make sure the CA glue is dried. Now the chassis we pre-painted in part one. We've got some Vallejo model colour black. We've thinned it with water. And we're just going to paint these inner wheel arches. Because this will be visible from the engine bay. You could mask it off and spray if you wanted. To be honest. Vallejo model colour. Fantastic paint. I need a little bit more. So I just put a little splodge on one of our paint cups from UMP. And then a dab of water. You could use our thinner if you wanted. Or your thinner of choice. I think water works best personally. Um, I think it's perfect for, they are water based, so to thin it, yeah, I use water, simple as that. So I've mixed it, you shouldn't really mix with the brush, but I do, wipe off the excess. And carefully brush paint all of it. Nice to go back to brush painting from time to time. It's a bit cathartic, is that the right word? I think it is. Get back to your roots, rather than airbrushing everything. But if you wanted, you could mask this off. Be pretty simple to mask to be fair. But for me, a little bit of brush painting from time to time can be quite enjoyable. So I'll just show doing one side. So instead of carefully following around all those lines. I'm going to be as precise as I can. Good paint and colour. Absolutely ideal for brush painting. By far one of the best out there. Just try not to go over the paint too many times once it's dry. Saves on brush strokes, but just make sure you get even coverage. You don't have to try and get it done in one go like I did. Um, but I know, again, how far I can push this. And that's it. Pretty simple and easy. We'll get this side done. Repeat on the other. And we're ready to mount our engine in place. So as you can see, we've not painted all the top of the chassis. You can't see that from inside. We've done all underneath. 
on all the engine bay. And I'll put my wasting paper, you're not going to see it. We have a full cockpit tub to go in there that we're going to deal with in part three. Like I say, if you've got any suggestions on the colour for the interior, please pop them in the comments. I am open to listening. I kind of have them ahead what I want to do already, but I'm always open for suggestions. So pop them in there. I'll take on board everyone's recommendations. So a couple of dabs of CA glue. We're going to mount our front suspension subframe steering assembly in place. No movable steering on this. There's no poly caps. The wheels literally clip on to those clips at the end. It's a bit of a mm, rustic way of mounting the wheels. It's not the best, but it works. And it's pretty simple. Just make sure everything's straight. Everything's the right angle. And there we go. We'll let that dry. Now we're coming with our engine. A couple of mounting points for the engine on the chassis. So we've got a generous dollop of sea glue in there. Get our mounting points underneath at the back. Get that on and then push it down at the front. Hold for a few seconds. And there we go. Make sure it's straight. Make sure it's level. Make sure it's pushed down fully like so. There we go. Place up that rear part. Push it down. And job done. There we go. Leave it to dry for a while before you work on anything else. So we've got our exhaust. We have to open up the holes a touch. You can see I've got a drill bit there and our pin vise. But a couple of dabs of CA glue. Everything fits in there. Perfect. Make sure everything's lined up right. Add a bit more glue to this centre bit. And the front where it attaches to the manifold too. Again, hold for a few seconds. And there we go. We're all done. Repeat for the other side. And we can crack on with something else. So there we go. Both exhausts are in. We've got the rear differential and prop shaft in place. We've popped the prop shaft in the engine. We've lined up the uh, rear differential and axle in place where it should be. We're going to add a dab of glue where it's required. And then once we locate this in place, again, vitally important we make sure it's level, straight, symmetrical each side. Otherwise, it's going to look odd when we put the wheels on later. But a generous little slaver of the glue on the mounting points. And then we line it up. Push it in place. There we go, make sure it's fully home on the glue. And then most importantly, make sure it's all level and straight. And there we are. The rear shock is now, they go into the bottom and into the top of that rear axle. Quite simple. Again, making sure it's all level. These will tell you that everything's in level. It's just you need to push it down a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. Rear suspension components, you can see we painted the springs in silver. I went with silver, just to add a bit of difference to the colour. Um, not really going to see it anyway, but yeah, just added it. A couple of dabs of CA glue. They are handed these, so they only go in one side. The other side's already on, as you can see. And just some careful gluing. We'll get everything glued in place. A bit of paint there, there we go, we got rid of it. And there we go, there's those glued in place. Now, I think this is our firewall bulkhead. We've got our master cylinder on there, glued that in place. There's a part on the other side. This isn't going on today, this will be done in part three because it goes on part of the interior. Again, I initially made a mistake of painting this body color, as you can see, and then realized ah, it's actually semi gloss black because it's in the engine bay. And there we go. Done. Once we add a wash to this stuff, it's going to look great. And we'll do that in part three. It'll bring everything to life a little bit. A 
So there we go. Just let it dry for a minute and then we can start moving things around and doing what's required. So quick grab our instructions, turn it round. We've got our front panel that houses our radiator and its housing. Again, it's orientated one particular way. Couple of dabs of CA glue. Make sure it's the right way around and drop it in place. Our housing goes on around the back. Again, it is handed. Look at the instructions to refer for which way it goes. Pop it in place. Yep, fits there perfect. If you're in doubt, always dry fit, test fit it. Better to do that and then try and prise it all back off. Quite easy and simple. And there we go. There's our radiator and housing on there as well. And our fan sits right inside that. Hopefully it will. Hopefully it all lines up. And again, another part. I initially made a mistake of painting in blue. And then realized it is actually semi-gloss black. And it's a very, very nice semi-gloss black as well. The battery here as well. That goes just next to the radiator. So we will detail paint that up in the next part. I just want to get it in place for now. So again, some careful CA glue application. And it just pushes home to the side. Goes around one way. There we go. Fits in really well. Jobs are good. So the wheels. Now, I did contemplate stripping these and repainting them, but I thought, you know what, let's try something first. So on the right is how they come out of the box. On the left is after adding a panel line wash. I think it looks 10 times better. And I thought, you know what, the chrome is not too bad on this kit. Let's leave it in. Let's just add a wash to the wheels. As you can see there, we're just applying the wash. Let the capillary action carry it round. And then we'll let that dry, wipe off the excess. And there we go. I think it adds a nice look to it. Another trick you could use, you could map varnish them. I've seen people do that, and that looks quite good as well. But I think adding a wash adds a bit more depth to the wheel. It takes away some of that over-glaring shininess. Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, a massive difference adding that wash. We'll let it dry for 20 minutes or so, remove the excess from the cotton bud, and then we can get the wheels assembled. So as you can see, we've got the wheels mostly assembled now. Just test fitting the front ones. Popping the back ones on, they literally click in place. So all we've done there is we glued the two halves of the wheel together inside the um, tire. Now I did have a video showing the seam removal of the tire. The tool is on the bench somewhere. Uh, I can't see it to hand, but sadly I appear to have lost that footage. And I did show the wheels being glued together as well. And again, sadly, I've lost the footage. But literally gluing two halves together um, with some CA glue. I'm off camera, unfortunately, but it's just test fitting everything, make sure everything's straight, level, and the wheels literally just click into place. A quick test fit onto the body, making sure it's located right. Having a look, see how it should look compared to how it does look. And it seems to be looking pretty good. I have a picture. I'll show the picture in a second. I'm just going to pop the, the bonnet or hood on. And obviously because there's no interior in there, it is pushing the body work down a little bit lower than it should. So it's popping the bonnet up a bit. But I literally wanted to show it. 
mock up how it's going to look. So when you start picking things like this up, if they're handling stuff on the bench, there's our seam remover there to the right, a little black thing. It's a huge cool remover as well. We'll do the same thing, apparently. So if we line it up roughly where it goes, line up the back with the chassis flush at the back, line up the front so that the um, bonnet stays shut, we can get a quick look of how it's going to sit on its wheels. Like I said, I have a picture. I'll pop it in now. So there we go. This is roughly where it's going to sit. I think it'll be a little bit lower or uh, hopefully a bit lower on the front. But that's looking really smart. Happy with this colour. It's uh, it's beautiful. We haven't even flattered this 2K yet. This already looks stunning. So uh, yeah, this side's looking. I like it a lot. There we go then. So, Honest Wheels. Um, as you saw, very quick look at how it's going to look and it looks spectacular um now the running gear and the engine on these you could really go to town as we could have on this i literally done it out of the box i think later down the line we'll pick a kit and we'll start to detail up that engine bay a little bit more we'll add some leads to it i've done the leads before several times um but i need to buy one of the proper distributor caps really you can only really get those from the state so i need to plan ahead in future and buy some um because the kit supplied um distributor isn't the best to add wires to they're not very big you'd have to glue them on and it doesn't look right in my opinion so i'd rather buy one of the pre-wired ones which i used on my torino i think it used on my hemicuda um so yeah that, at a later date we'll definitely do that this is going to be the end of the uh american cars i'm really enjoying these at the minute uh, and there's several that are mine up. The problem is with Revel, it's the piffle of Earth. If you can buy a kit you think is good and new, and you get it, and it's terrible. Uh, for example, I was looking at a kit on Amazon the other day. I think it was a Plymouth GTO, GTX. I thought, that looks cool. And I looked into it, and it was like a 1968 kit. And I was like, yeah, we ain't building that. We are not building that one. So, yeah, we'll see more of these in the future. But... Part three, which is coming up next, we're going to deal with the interior, which is actually already in progress. I'm already ahead of this video filming. That's all primed, up ready for paint. We've got some flocking to do in it. Um, we then got to get all our uh, exterior chrome on, the glass, and polish all that body up. That's it, really. Um, not a lot left to do. Um, it's an enjoyable build. The Rebel kits, they're not Tammy kits by a long shot, but even this kit, which is 24 years old, I believe, um, it still goes together pretty decently, not too bad at all. Um, now, one of the things I've been thinking of is what should I do for the interior colour? So, if you've got any ideas, pop them in the chat down below. Should I go conservative, go a bit leery, or what? So, if you've got any ideas on that, pop it in the comments down below, uh, and I'll certainly read and have a think. Kind of got the colour I want to do in the back of my mind, and it's literally ready to be painted today. So, this will be up to today the video so get your comments in quick uh, but you'll more than likely see this it is monday today uh half 10 in the morning so i reckon the next part will be up friday maybe if we're lucky if we can work through the week we've got a very busy week this week um uh, sorting things out um but yeah hopefully we can get the next part up and move on to our next project which i'll speak about in the next bench update that i do when the impala is finished so there we are. So if you've got any comments or questions, pop them down below. As always, if you see anything in the video you think, oh, where did you get that from? There is a link in every non-live video, and it's a big, long list of products of everything I use in my videos. Admittedly, it does need updating, and I want to get a day to myself. I'll sit there uh, and go through it all. There's over 100 products on there. I'll go through and update them all, make sure the links are live, add anything new on there as well. Um because it's a handy link, but people watch the videos, hear me say about the link, and then still message me going, where did you get that light from? What camera do you use? It's all in that list. Seriously, that's why I made it, to make it easier for people. So go and have a look at that. Uh, but like I say, hopefully the end of the week, I'll have the next part up, get this one done, and move on to our next project, which I'm quite excited about as well. So we'll see what's coming next. So... As always, check out Natasha's Scale Model Facebook page and forum. Both free to join, both good fun. Admittedly, the forum's a bit slower than the Facebook page. Um, for me, ISM Facebook is ISM now. It's mega busy on that Facebook page. Loads of amazing work is shared there. 
and it will literally keep you entertained all day long uh, with the new work that goes on there, the posts. While we're strict on some rules, we do, you know, let's have a laugh and a joke on there as well. So, yeah, you take it how it is. It's one of those things. Uh, check out umpretail.com. We can get most of the products you'll see in my videos. Not all of them, because I'm not that biased. I only use our products. Uh, but, again, the links for this are down below. Check out the Live the Bench page and offer a hangout group for the live show and offer a hangout news. And check out my Paul ISM Facebook page where my personal modern worker shirt and my Paul ISM Imster Instagram page as well. You can go over there and look at all my work that's shared on there. So we'll see you very soon for part three. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.